Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This video is the first instalment of the conversion of a Biob Tube 35 to a marine aquarium with sump, which is just here. Um, sort of so going with what I first started with is I removed um, the standard Biob filtration unit, which is this bit here. Um, so I removed, so first of all, I removed the bottom plug which is here, which where the airline comes in to feed, to power the filtration unit. Um, there's a sponge that normally goes in here and the air goes through in that, but that's irrelevant now, so we're not using that. So I unscrewed these three screws, um, which then this plug here. So I had to give a bit of a wiggle to, um, to get this out as a silicone around, there was an O-ring there's also silicone around there, which uh, I'm assuming is an extra safety thing, as uh, water does manage to find um, its way out of everywhere. So once I've done that, there was a little um, air stone, if you can see that, which is uh, which is bogging. Um, but there was a little um, uh, little pipe sticking out hard plug, which I've also cut. I don't know if you can see that. So I've cut that flush, um, and then I've. Uh, Reattach it, took the air stone off as we don't need that, like I said. Um, and then I've got to, haven't done it yet, but gonna just pump a bit more silicone in that hole and in that hole just so there's no water getting out. Um, I was thinking about patching it over with a bit of plastic, but you know, if this was what was already there, that'll do because eventually there'll be some nice coral sand or something like that over to cover that. And this is the first first attempt so then the second thing you could probably already notice there is two big holes in the back which uh, on the back here there's two 25 mil holes there I uh, use this uh, cobalt hole saw from tool station I think with a couple of quid um, which you buy you have to buy this bit which is a couple of good, which is like the drill bit. Just start your pilot hole. And obviously these are separate and they do like from 19 mil all the way up to 40 odd mil. But um, I went with a 25 mil to cut these holes. As, as you can see, there's a, there's a sort of where the wall of the tank is and then there's a center. So I was looking at putting um, a three quarter inch, inch bulkhead um, in there, but there's just not enough room, especially around here. I thought it'd be a bit too close to the edge and might just weaken it a little bit. Um, the saw, the whole saw is really good. They're designed for um, steel, plastic, wood. Uh, they're very good. I think um, I was a bit steady with the tank as I was uh, unsure how it would work with drilling it. So I've gone a bit slow and I think we've gone a bit slow it sort of left burrs, which I tried to file off, but I sort of scuffed it. But this will all be underneath, so you're not going to see it. But I sort of, um, it's left burrs where the plastic's got really hot and then left it little, um, little piles of molten plastic, uh, which isn't great. But I filed them down on the holes. And I did have the plug somewhere, but I've... Uh, God knows what I did with them. So these are the little uh, plugs that have uh, come out of there, the pilot hole. You can see where the plastic has got hot and it sort of left this burr, solid molten plastic um, bit on the edges. So I've just kept them just so you guys can see. Obviously I think I just went a little bit too slow with the drill bit or I could have maybe used a bit of water but I just was uh, doing it alone and um, but it worked. It's just not the smoothest of holes but once the bulkheads are in I don't think well you're not going to notice so that's that um I've now sort of I've sort of constructed the constructed the um return pipe and the overflow of the tank already I've done a few bits I've uh, got carried away and then thought maybe uh people of uh YouTube might be interested because I looked online and I saw a few different um Biob conversions, but not really a step-by-step -step or just how they did it. They just with 
you know, they didn't show in detail of how they did the holes and bits and pieces. So I thought I'd just do a little bit more in depth. Uh, so this is my return here. It's got a clear acrylic um, freeway junction, um, acrylic, clear acrylic tube. Um, I've got, um, so these are half inch, yeah, half inch um, bulkheads and the minimum size sort of clear acrylic tube I could get was three quarters of an inch. So I've got some um, connections here to uh, make go from half half inch to three quarters of an inch. So um, this pipe and it gives you a bit more surface for the water to go back in then. Um, obviously I've read different things um, saying to the return should be twice the size, but I'm uh, gonna give it a go. Um, I wanted it to all look a bit uniform and I didn't really have the space to put anything bigger in this gap. So I'll just, uh, do these, all these bits are from the plastic pipe shop, uh, which is online, which I saw a video of him with his pipes on YouTube. So I'll put the link of where I got all these bits from and the detailed description of what bits are what. Obviously this is what I've decided to use, but there is obviously loads of other different options but it's just one um, so these do fit in in the tank quite nice so just here like so then this bit just screws the bottom and the, the tank actually at the bottom here has a slight lean sort of uh, chamfers outward so actually when you look at it from the side the return does lean into the tank a little bit but i did fill out of water the other day just to give it a test and doesn't um doesn't really look odd to be fair and as they're both leaning forward obviously they both look the same so i don't think it's too much of an issue um i did look at um making them straight but I thought it was just more um, more room for error and water to be able to escape out of the tank, which is never a good thing. So a slightly, this is the first conversion. Hopefully if this uh, goes really well, then we'll look at um, trying it again. As uh, I do enjoy the marine, keeping fish in general and marine fish. And it's just something, uh, something a little, diff little bit different. Then just use Welcome back to uh, part two. Things have progressed a lot since the first part of this video was made. I've been busy building the unit to house the sump and filter system, uh, which has really tested my carpentry skills. So I didn't film that bit of the, for the video. Uh, once the cabinet was built, it was full steam ahead into putting the components together so I'll explain what I have done and what equipment I have used. So here we go into the uh, into the cabinet. Here we are. It's um, a lot of equipment for such a small tank, but um, it's either go big or go home. That's what they say apparently. But here we go. So uh, we go from the sort of front and working our way in, or down to the basics. So always a glass sump uh, from Aqua One, which is one of their they do like a complete marine tank system and it was uh, something I was looking at. I was originally looking at building a sump myself, getting a tank and putting baffles in and all that sort of stuff. And obviously that is an option for people if you want to do that yourself. But I sort of cheated and for a, what, 20, 30 pounds more and without all the hassle of trying to cut glass and get it cut, I just got it made. So I think it was... 70 UK pounds which is quite good for something that's done and it's you know it's going to have some sort of guarantee with it so there was a yeah considering it's a major component it holds quite a bit of water it's just peace of mind that it's all put together but obviously if you're on a bit more of a budget there is obviously videos you can look at and make that yourself so that's the sort of basis uh, of the whole sample the filter itself and so in the bottom here we have a TMC 
2000 DC reef pump. Um, so it's minimum wattage is five watts and maximum is about 20 watts. So obviously that is depending on how, what speed you have it on. It's got 15 mil and 20 mil fittings that screw onto the top with a maximum head of uh, 3.5 meters. So this is only just over about 1.5 meters up to the top of the tank. Not near, nearly closer to two. So there's lots of um, head height remaining and uh, it's got a strong flow up to the top. So then it go pumps the water up through this plastic pipe in here, PVC pipe in, which is, um, I'll put all the description in the video of where I bought it all from. So it's sort of a mini manifold with another tap here. Just so easier way to sort of do water changes or I can add components to, um, to it if I want to add uh, to new reactors or bits and pieces to it. That is there, so then it goes up here and then up into the tank where on the connections of the bottom of the tank it has got some threaded one inch sort of connectors where the pipes join onto. Um, that's the controller there, so I've got it set on 15 on the controller there. So it's not fully max, but it just gives a bit of flexibility if I want to turn it up. Uh, the pump, some of you might think the pump is a bit excessive for this size tank, but there is no power heads or anything in the tank. As I wanted to call, keep the tank at the top minimal, um, minimal like, as in look, so I didn't want any extra pump. Plus it's curved, so it would be impossible really to put any sort of um, power heads or you know wave makers in there plus anything that goes inside will just look a bit nasty as it sort of magnifies anything inside the tank gets magnified about double um, so there we go so the water goes up here then it comes back down through this pipe work here I've got a tap here controlling the flow of the water uh, coming down which I'll sort of explain in, in a bit later of why that's there then it comes down and then into this filter sock, um, so the bracket and the filter sock are both from TMC. It's about £15 for the, U the bracket and the, and the first filter sock. It's quite handy, it will, my other pipes which I'll go into in a minute, all other pipes go through there so it all gets pre-filtered before it goes back into the sump. Um, once it comes back then I've got another pump in here, it was an Eheim 1000 compact, which I had before. Uh, so it's uh, capable of pumping a thousand litres an hour. And that runs then the UV filter, which is up here. And the Bubble Magnus MF70H, that's the model number. So at the moment I've got some carbon in there, that was to get rid of uh, the cloudy water I had from putting the sand and stuff in the tank and uh, the carbon I use is rubber carbon and this whole amount in here this is 250 grams is capable of doing a thousand um, thousand liters or 220 imperial gallons or 264 US gallons for about three months and um, it's always something quite good to have running in a tank I've always sort of done it, it helps just um, take all them nasties out of the water. Um, you can just use the bag, there's like a media bag that comes inside you can use, but as I'm not using this, I'm eventually going to use this with rower FOSS to keep the phosphates down in the tank. I thought while it's not, I'm not needing that at the moment, put the carbon in, because obviously Max keeps that water moving around the carbon and makes the carbon more efficient. Uh, so then we've going the UV here. We're using Aquamedic Helix Max UV uh, 9 watt. Uh, so it's suitable for uh, 25 to 125 litres of salt water. Um, it can do more in fresh water, but as we're using it on marine, I'll only tell you about that. So that's um, something relatively new, but it's a new thing out. But both the bottom here and the top, the heads are movable. So if you've got a small space, you can have one 
sort of the inlet or the outlet pointing in one direction and then the other one in the other. So if you've got a, in a corner or whatever, you can you don't have to have both the pipes facing the same way. You can have one going left or right, whatever makes it easier for you. They do recommend the best way is to have it upright. So then the water will then follow this sort of helix that goes around the UV to maximize the contact time the water has. Um, so roughly going through there, they recommend for salt water about 200 liters an hour. Obviously, if it goes a bit slower, it's gonna have more contact time and kill any nasties in the tank. Uh, where are we now? Uh, we don't have any media or anything in the bottom. Um, that will be added shortly. That's it at my local fish shop. Uh, they're maturing that up for me um, to just help the cycle process go a little bit quicker. Uh, we've got in the back there, we've got a newer firm heater, which I don't know if you can see. Right at the very back there, I've always used um, newer heaters, or newer, yeah, newer. Uh, that's 100 watt, so suitable for a 75 litre to 100 litre tank. And obviously with a, a sump, sump tank, you always lose a bit of heat from when it's going from the sump up to the tank. So it could be, it could be a little bit small, it could be a bit bigger. So obviously it doesn't have to work as much, but I think um, that is suitable for me. Um, um, the temperature, I've been running it now for four or five days and the temperature's all working quite well and the heat is not permanently on, so I think it's um, working quite well. And the cabinet is quite insulated, so once the door is, the front of it's on, it is uh, contained it there. I do have at the moment, which I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna keep it, I've got a Bubble Magnus G7. Um, this is something from an old tank. I used to have it, I used to have it on an old tank, which was an Aqua One 400 reefer or something like that. So 400 liter reef tank. Um, I had it kicking around, uh, as most of you know or don't know, sort of second-hand equipment in, in in the aquarium hobby sort of is worth next to nothing really or definitely isn't worth anywhere near what you paid for it even if it is only a month old um, people tend to buy it either brand buy it brand new um, so they have a bit of a warranty on stuff with it but um, it's a very good feel I did have I did look at selling it but I thought I'd keep it, um, obviously this project has come up, but I'm thinking maybe it is a bit excessive. So yeah, the whole system is about 65 litres, so the tank at the top is up here. It's about 35 litres, once you remove the um, live rock, once you add the live rock, it's obviously going to reduce the amount of water. So that's going to take a good sort of couple of litres away. So it's between 60 and 65 litres for the whole sort of system, including any water in the sump and the reactor and sort of going through the pipe work is a minimal amount. Um, but that is uh, that how it, that's how it is so far. Um, you can see I've sort of, I've added a few, I've added just a light up here. It's just an LED, LED light for map lens sort of taking advantage of um, them closing down. <laughs> Got a good deal on them. Has this cool little um, light switch over here. Oh, you go too close. Sort of wave your hand in front of it to turn it on and off and then hold it in front of it to, um, to sort of dim the light as well, like that. And then it will go back up in a minute. Or you wave it like that, it turns off turns back on which is uh, quite handy when you're dealing with a sump and your hands are soaking wet which inevitably you try not to but it always happens just a six gang extension lead for everything to plug into so the standard bio light which I'll go up to the top now the lighting for just the um, for the cabinet and then all the pumps and heaters are plugged in there there is a one that needs a space but well uh, work that out where we're going to put that once we've uh, decided if, what skimmer we're going to do or we'll uh, decide what we do with that plug 
So that is it. So you've got all, oh, I'm going to say, the hard pipe in there. That's come for the water going in and out. This bit here has got a tap um, for my sort of design initially for the return. It works, but it made, made a heck of a lot of noise. I've had to look at different alternatives. Um, alternative looking uh, videos on YouTube of how to silence it. Come up with this solution here, which sort of reduces the amount of the water flow coming back, which then levels the water, keeps the water in the tank at the level I want it, but it reduces, cuts the noise of this sort of slurping noise that is just horrendous. Um, if that was to continue, I don't think I'd be allowed it in the house, so um, <laughs> I had to come up with a solution to uh, stop that. So let's go up to the tank. So that's the that's a filter room or filter house as such. Life support system. And then we come up to the tank here. So in the first part of the video, you saw the sort of inlet and the outlet. Um, these holes in the outlet are additional. They weren't in the original design. I sort of spread it out so the water can come in through different through all the sides and through the top. Um, I don't know where I explained obviously it does recommend you using a larger size return um, than the than the inlet the return should be a bigger size. Um, obviously I didn't have any space to put a bigger outlet, so I've sort of had to make these adaptions to make it um Make it silent. I'm sure if I'd used a bit, if I had the room available to have a bigger outlet, I don't think it would have made as much noise as it did. But I do have a quite a high flow coming into the tank, so I think the amount of water coming in, obviously that amount is coming out at the same time. So the, I think the hole would have had to be considerably big, bigger to stop that slurping, gargling noise. Um, but so here I am now. I've got the uh, coral sand on the bottom here. Which is just a nice about a centimetre roughly across the whole base. I never like it too thick. It's just more to clean um, when you're uh, siphoning, siphoning that through, and it just it's just a lot easier to maintain as a whole. I've got some live rock, which is from another tank that I have, which has been up and running for a few years. So in fact, the whole, the live rock is probably between six to eight years sort of old I've had it in a tank that whole time so for my sort of first ever tank and so it's always been in water so it's uh, very mature so I've used that in here I've done many different bits to it as you can see there's a nice hole perfect hole in there I've had pillars and I've drilled it all and that is a bit of a nightmare but uh, it was a nice tank so yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if I explained in the first first part of it. I've just used a standard Biorb um, lighting unit, which is the MCR light, which is sort of a fancy, support fancy light. So it's got, um, you can set multiple different colors. Um, you can have it on um, like a random, setting so it's sort of like a disco i suppose but uh, i won't be using that but it does have a eight hour eight hour ten hour and twelve hour cycle so it goes from white to blue and just sort of cycles from daylight to moonlight to daylight and goes on and off on and off so i'm going to see how that works how it looks um obviously i might need to look at the lighting at some point but um it does light up the tank very well I'm not really, I might put a few sort of small corals in, like soft corals, but obviously we'll, we'll just go with a fish first and uh, see how it goes. Um, if you do have any questions, or um, please put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them if, uh, if I see them, but I will look out for them. Um, please uh, subscribe, um, hit that button down there. Also uh, hit that um, bell if you want to uh, be notified of any updates. Um, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll be back soon. Cheers.